The apartment building was old, but it had character. It was located in a quiet neighborhood that was full of trees and chirping birds. When I first saw the apartment, I fell in love with it. The high ceilings, the large windows, and the spacious living room were all perfect. I signed the lease and started packing my bags. The move was long and exhausting. I had to carry my boxes up several flights of stairs, but I finally made it to my new apartment. As soon as I walked in, I noticed a strange smell. It was musty and stale, like the air had been trapped inside for years. I thought it was just because the apartment had been closed up for a while, so I opened the windows and aired it out. That's when I saw it. A small door tucked away in the corner of the living room. It was barely visible, but once I saw it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I tried to open it, but it was locked. I didn't have the key, so I decided to leave it alone for now. That night, I couldn't sleep. Every little creak and noise made me jump. I kept thinking about that door and what could be behind it. I tried to tell myself that it was just my imagination, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The next day, I decided to explore the rest of the apartment. It was then that I found another door, this one hidden in the back of my bedroom closet. I opened it, and my heart sank. The room was small, dark, and creepy. The walls were covered in old wallpaper that was peeling off in places. There was a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling, but it was so dim that it barely illuminated the room. As I looked around, I noticed something odd. There were scratch marks on the walls, like someone had tried to claw their way out. I shuddered and quickly closed the door, trying to forget about the room. But every night, I could hear strange noises coming from behind the door in the living room. It sounded like something was moving around, like the shuffling of feet or the dragging of something heavy. I couldn't take it anymore. I needed to know what was behind that door. I called the landlord and asked if he had a key. He told me that the door led to an old storage room, and that he didn't have the key. He said that he would send someone over to take a look at it, but that he didn't think there was anything to worry about. A few days later, a maintenance man arrived at my apartment. He had a key to the door, and he opened it for me. What I saw inside made my blood run cold. The room was filled with old furniture, all covered in dust and cobwebs. But that wasn't the worst part. There was a trapdoor in the floor, and it was slightly ajar. I looked down into the darkness, but I couldn't see anything. The maintenance man went down first, holding a flashlight. As soon as he disappeared from sight, I heard a blood-curdling scream. I ran down the stairs and into the room. The maintenance man was lying on the ground, his body twisted in an unnatural position. His eyes were wide open, and he was staring up at the ceiling. That's when I saw it. A pair of glowing eyes staring back at me from the darkness. I don't remember much after that. I think I passed out. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. The police were there, asking me questions. They found nothing in the hidden room, but I knew what I had seen. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was still in that room, something evil and dangerous. Days turned into weeks, and I tried to forget about the hidden room. I told myself that it was just my imagination, that I had been stressed out from the move. But every night, I could hear strange noises coming from behind the door. I knew that I couldn't ignore it anymore. I called a paranormal investigator to help me figure out what was going on. He arrived at my apartment with all kinds of equipment, EMF readers, infrared cameras, and voice recorders. We went into the hidden room, and the investigator started to ask questions. Is there anyone here? He said into the darkness. If there is, please give us a sign. That's when it happened. A loud bang echoed through the room, and the investigator's EMF reader started beeping like crazy. We both jumped, and I could feel my heart racing. The investigator continued to ask questions, and we started to hear strange whispers coming from the darkness. They were faint at first, but they grew louder and more insistent. I was about to leave the room when I felt something grab my ankle. 
I looked down and saw a cold, ghostly hand wrapped around my leg. I screamed and tried to pull away, but it was too strong. The investigator managed to pull me away, and we both ran out of the room. We slammed the door shut and stood there, gasping for air. That's when we heard it. A low growl coming from behind the door. It was followed by a guttural voice, whispering my name. I knew that I had to leave that apartment. I couldn't stay there any longer. I packed my bags and left that night, never to return again. To this day, I don't know what was in that hidden room. Some say that it was a ghost, trapped in the apartment for years. Others say that it was a demon, summoned by the previous tenants. All I know is that I never want to experience anything like that again. After the incident with the paranormal investigator, I tried to move on from the experience. But it was difficult. Every night, I had nightmares about the hidden room, and I could still hear strange noises coming from behind the door. I decided to do some research on the apartment building to see if I could find any clues about what had happened there. I went to the local library and started digging through old newspapers and records. That's when I discovered something chilling. The apartment building had a long history of strange occurrences and unexplained deaths. There had been several reports of people going missing, and their bodies were never found. Others had claimed to see ghostly apparitions wandering the halls. I realized that I had made a terrible mistake by moving into that apartment building. I was living in a place that was haunted by something evil and dangerous. Despite my fears, I couldn't just leave the apartment. I had signed a year-long lease, and I couldn't afford to break it. I decided to try and make the best of the situation, to learn to live with the strange occurrences and the hidden room. But things only got worse from there. Every night, I would hear strange noises and whispers coming from behind the door. I started to notice that objects were moving on their own, and I would find strange symbols etched into the walls. One night, I woke up to find the hidden room door wide open. I could see a faint light coming from inside, and I knew that I had to investigate. I cautiously entered the room, and what I saw made my blood run cold. The walls were covered in strange symbols and drawings, all done in what appeared to be blood. The air was thick with an unnatural coldness, and I could see my breath fogging up in front of me. That's when I heard it. A low growling sound coming from the darkness. I turned around to leave, but the door was gone. It had been replaced by a solid brick wall. I was trapped in the hidden room, with whatever evil force was in there with me. I screamed for help, but no one could hear me. I was alone, with no hope of escape. Days turned into weeks, and I lost all track of time. The room was my prison, and I was slowly losing my mind. I could feel the evil presence getting stronger, and I knew that it was only a matter of time before it consumed me. But then, something miraculous happened. The wall that had blocked the door disappeared, and I was able to escape. I ran out of the apartment building, never looking back. Years have passed since that fateful night, and I have never returned to that apartment building. But I still have nightmares about the hidden room, and I can still feel the coldness and the evil presence. I have learned that some things are best left alone, that there are some mysteries that should never be uncovered.